A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, if you know that God is righteous, you may be sure that everyone who does right is born of him. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. It does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory be to you, Lord. John.
John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks before me, for he was before me. I myself did not know him, but for this I came baptizing with water, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John bore witness. I saw the Spirit descend as a dove from heaven, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and have borne witness that this is the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. In the first reading today, we are called uh, to consider the love that God has had for us and that he desires to call us children. And this love is manifest in the fact that he sends his son so that through his son, he might gain for himself more children by grace. So that he sends his son by nature so that he might take to himself other children by grace. And so that is what we are. We become children of the heavenly father through the Son, through His working in us and through His grace in us. And He is sent so that we can come to know the Father through the Son and come to love the Father through His Holy Spirit. And so this is what we see here, this rejoicing that we have in John in the Gospel today, John the Baptist, which is that he bears witness to the one who is coming to baptize with the Holy Spirit. So he is coming in His light and His truth coming to teach us truth and to fill us with his Holy Spirit so that we might love God as the Son, as the Spirit loves God and that we might know the Father as the Son knows the Father. And so we are brought into this inner life of the Trinity through this mission of the Son and the Holy Spirit. And this is what St. John is rejoicing in. And so what we have at the beginning of today's gospel, still in chapter one of John's gospel, and I read something interesting yesterday which noted the kind of continued allusions, if you will, to the first creation in Genesis. And so what we have is in the beginning, that's how John begins his first chapter. But also what happens is that in the first chapter of St. John, he introduces each new day by saying, and the next day. And so what happens before today's gospel, I don't know why they've excluded it, but the beginning of the sentence of today's gospel is, and the next day, John saw Jesus coming towards him. And so one of the commentators notes that in the first chapter of St. John's gospel, you have four days that are mentioned. And at the beginning of chapter two, it says on the third day. And so if you take all of those days together, you have these seven days, almost this new creation that is coming through Jesus Christ with an allusion to the first creation and all of the passing days of that first creation. And so this new creation is now coming through Jesus Christ. And so on the next day, John saw Jesus. And there was so much commentary even just on those three lines the fact that John is able to see Jesus is because God has become visible in the flesh. God has become visible. In Jesus, God is made manifest to us. God has a human face. God can walk among us in Jesus Christ. And so it is such a wonder, simply the fact that John saw Jesus. John saw his face. He saw him walking. He saw his gentleness. He saw all of the wonders of the person of Jesus Christ. And not only does he see Jesus, but he sees Jesus coming towards him. This is the beautiful mystery of the incarnation of the Lord, is that he doesn't come just for us in general. He comes for us in particular. The same mystery, the same beauty that Jesus, that St. John the Baptist saw here of Jesus coming towards him. 
we have that same experience here at the Mass. The Lord descends from heaven and is made present on the altar in the Blessed Sacrament. But it is not just for the general populace that he does this. He does this for individual souls. He desires to come to each of us individually in Holy Communion. And so at the Mass, we see Jesus. And what is he doing? He is coming towards us. He is coming towards us for the purpose of Holy Communion. And this is the beautiful mystery of the continuation of the Incarnation through the Blessed Sacrament. And John's response to this wonder that God has not only taken flesh but is now coming towards him and desires to draw close to him. He points out this mystery to those who do not recognize it. The Lord is walking amongst the crowds in an ordinary way. He looks like an ordinary man. But St. John is able to perceive the hidden mystery. This is the Lamb of God. And so for also for us in the Mass, what looks like and has the appearance of ordinary bread, we are called by faith to pierce the mystery and see not only the divinity of Christ, but also his humanity. And we are called, like St. John the Baptist, to proclaim the mystery that others do not yet recognize. And so St. John the Baptist, seeing the Lord, recognizing him, and also seeing that others do not recognize him, immediately is inspired into his mission and into his prophetic witness. And he says, behold, see what I see. Look at what I am looking at, which is the person of Jesus Christ. Recognize the great mystery that is in your midst. And he says, behold, the Lamb of God. Now, in the temple at that time, there were always multiple offerings going on at different times and at different festivals. But the one principal sacrifice in the temple was always the lamb, one offered in the morning and one offered in the evening. But this lamb that St. John is pointing out is different because while all of the other lambs that were offered in the temple came from human persons, this lamb comes from God. This is the Lamb of God. And so referring to Christ now, not as the Word, he doesn't say, behold the Word of God, but behold the Lamb. Because this is particular to his, his mission of sacrificing himself for our sake. He is called a Lamb because he has all the gentleness of a Lamb. He goes to slaughter like a lamb. He goes to his sacrifice, offering himself in love patiently and in gentleness. But he is also a lamb because of his purity, unblemished. He is the spotless sacrifice of God. And his sacrifice is unlike any other sacrifice before, because all of the other sacrifices that had taken place could not take away the sins of the world. But behold, this is the Lamb of God, different from any other Lamb offered and will only have to be offered once. And this Lamb, His sacrifice is fruitful, unlike all of the other sacrifices that have come before, because His sacrifice takes away the sins of the world. And this is the profound mystery that we enter into here at the Mass. We are participating here at the Mass in the sacrifice of the Lamb of God. And we receive that Lamb of God in Holy Communion. These same words of St. John the Baptist are used after the consecration. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Amen.